Around two months ago, I made a video on the PVS-69, and in that video, I shot with and mentioned the Sotac Burst 4. Since then, I've shot and used this device a good amount, and I finally feel comfortable to make a review on one. Before I get into it though, I just want to give you guys a disclaimer and a quick rundown. I've only used this through digital NVGs, and uh, now for the quick rundown. The clone, it's really funky, has some strange issues, but it's held zero and it's pretty bright. Alright, I'm going to break this video into four parts. First, I'll quickly go over why this laser is unique and explain the price point. Second, the laser itself. This is going to be how it held zero, brightness, and the zeroing process. Third, I'll go over the whole unit itself, basically the controls, what came in the box, and durability. And last, I'll go over my setups with the laser. I'll leave you guys with timestamps so you can skip to whatever you want, so just, you know, for you guys. By far the main appeal of this IR device is its price point. For those that don't know, IR lasers run for around 1-3k, to 3K, and most of these are neutered by the FDA. But these purse come in around $130-$150 to $150 off eBay and are way over the 5 milliwatt power regulations. They are very much Chinese clones and are generally labeled as airsoft lasers. I think that's probably why not many people have bought these yet, uh, though some of your pecs got labeled as semi-safe to use by the MVG community. I've seen a rise of Reddit posts and popularity on these purses, but nowhere they're nowhere as mainstream as some of you yet. Alright, now to the more interesting part, how it held zero. I put around 1,100 rounds through two of my rifles with the purse on them. 800 rounds on my 16 inch 223 AR-15 and the remaining on my Savage 64 22 LR. As far as I can tell, this held solid zero on both of the rifles. I even threw my AR and gravel a couple times just to beat it up uh, to see how it handled and I saw no major point of impact shift. While I know a thousand rounds really isn't that much, I think it's enough to say that it will decently hold zero for most people as long as they're continuing to make these with decent quality control. The laser is really bright and definitely over 5 milliwatts as stated before. I'm not sure if these are full power, but it's still really nice to have compared to 5 milliwatt lasers. The visible laser is really nice and crisp. The IR laser is a little messy and kind of looks like a small potato under night vision. Not bad enough to mess up shots or really be a problem, but I think it's worth noting. The biggest issue with this laser in my experience is the zeroing process. There's all sorts of weird problems, mainly whenever I adjust the elevation it has some sort of effect on the windage. Sometimes I would, it would cause the windage to move, or sometimes it would just make the windage not be able to be adjusted to the left. It's really strange and really inconsistent. This seems to be the case with several, several other SOTAC bursts I've seen on Reddit. Another important note is that sometimes the clicks don't always seem to move the point of impact consistently, but that is just on my sample size of one. For some reason on mine, whenever I tighten the caps on the adjustment knobs down, it would adjust the laser itself. But after throwing the laser on rocks, it stopped doing that altogether, so I don't really know what's going on. Um, another issue that seems to be consistent across all of these devices is that the lasers aren't co-aligned, uh, meaning that the visible and IR lasers don't meet at a uh, standard distance. They seem to be off by like at 4 feet at around 100 yards. Now this isn't a really big deal depending on what you want to do with the laser, it will make uh, zeroing harder. Um, you know, this is a funky and difficult um, device. But once you get it dialed in, it will hold, I'll tell you that. Uh, so one of my tips I'd have for you if you buy one of these is just be careful and observant while zeroing and hope that everything will work out. Just uh, be cautious while zeroing. That's really my only thing there. Moving on to the housing and really just the quality of the product itself. First of all, this is made of milled metal, which I, I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. And the quality is actually really nice. The purse looks really good and it has fig Zeneco markings on it. The included pressure pad feels the same quality and it feels great. Overall, this product feels much nicer than it costs. Please note that the gravel has nicked the paint and scratched uh, the device on mine, and, but I've had no issues like that due to standard shooting. On to controls. The purse controls feel very nice and I really have no problems with them. The lever on the right adjusts the mode from off to IR to viz, and the clicks feel really excellent. There are two fire buttons on the laser itself, one on the top and one on the back. They both click nicely, but the clicks feel different from each other. It's hard to explain and really not a big deal. Um, the positioning of the buttons feel good, and to be honest, if I had a shorter rifle or less rail space, I would not even use a pressure pad. I would just run it on rail. The power adjustment buttons click nicely and are pretty self-explanatory. On the back of the laser, there's a light indicator that tells you when the laser is on. It's pretty bright and does the job. Really nothing special about it. Most lasers have something like that. The purse takes a CR123A battery from the front, 
and the threads have an o-ring around them for waterproofing. I have no idea what the battery life is like, but I have not, I've not had to change the battery yet and I've been using it on high for a while and left it on overnight a couple of times. The laser comes with a KV5PU switch clone and it's surprisingly well built. The base is made out of metal and the button is squishy but not really bad at all. There is a wheel to adjust the power from the switch. The clicks and stops on the wheel feel really funky and it's not really intuitive or ergonomic in my opinion. It's not a big deal but I thought it was important to mention. There's a button on the side that can turn the switch on and off for ND purposes, but it has no effect on the unit itself. My main complaint on the controls is the zeroing mode. It's not really a big deal, but the zeroing mode turns on after 3-ish seconds. This basically means that you don't have to continuously press down the button to keep the unit on, but I prefer a double tap system like most lasers, but once again, this can be trained out and it's not really a big deal. Alright, everyone's favorite part now, uh, setup. So, as you guys saw, in the video, I got a pretty cursed 22 setup right now. Um, very much don't recommend any of this, but uh, it held zero and it was really fun. So uh, maybe do this if you want. Uh, so <laughs> basically I got some random dovetail to pick rail adapter. And then I ran the purse there, probably not in line with the barrel, I have no clue. Uh, and then I just took one of my old really crappy Tacticon red dots I bought that I thought was like, oh, a good deal. Um, but uh, ran that above for kind of passive aiming, except this thing definitely can't passive aim. It's kind of garbage. Uh, it kind of gives you this uh, GB RS, you know, goobers group riser, you know, hide over bore, uh, all that type of stuff. <laughs> but it's actually not that bad. Um, it's pretty comfortable under nods. It's actually very comfortable under nods. If you can somehow get a side picture with this, um, it feels fine. And then I just run my hand back behind here and press the button like that. Can you see that? Yeah, like that. Or sometimes I do like a total C clamp. That's more like a freaking capital, capital C clamp. Um, yeah, easy access controls. Really fun, actually. The main reason I did this is because uh, where I shoot, I can't really shoot past a certain time uh, because neighbors and 22s aren't loud enough to bother the neighbors. That's a 22 setup. Uh, pretty fun. I think most of you guys will probably be running this on ARs or AKs. Um, which brings me to another point uh, that I don't know if I mentioned earlier. Um, I know I brought up on eBay. One of the places you can get this is uh, Vaughn's store. He's the person that uh, invented the PVS-69. Uh, if you don't want to buy them from a Chinese company or you just want American stock of them, uh, they will take a while to get there because he doesn't have infinite time. But uh, you will be able to get them from his store if you want to, if you want to support someone in America, support someone that builds cool stuff. Not sponsored by him. Just want to tell you guys that that's an option. Um, let me get my AR and I'll do a quick AR setup. By the way, uh, I've taken these off the zeros for... You have to like take them off the mounts uh, or the guns are on uh, for recording purposes. So the zero's already been lost. So I'll just show you the ARs now. All right. I also just realized I recorded the last thing in 630 FPS. So uh, that's my bad. Um, voila. So this is what I've been primarily running on. And I've made some changes since the PVS-69 to this rifle. Not really to the pressure pad switch. Um, so... Yeah, I just run the pressure pad switch with a uh, Bravo gunfire uh, M lock. I think this was called, but uh, it, it indexes really nicely. It's easy to press, easy to shoot with, and uh, yeah, it's comfy. I like it. Um, going back to what I said earlier, I just don't feel like the wheels intuitive. Like I, I guess it works, but I'd rather just run my hand up really quickly just to get positive clicks. But I guess if you really have to on the fly, you could easily just max in and out. Um, that's my opinion on the wheel, I guess. So, I, I mean, it's good that it's there. I feel like it could be better, but um, you're definitely gonna want something to index your hand on if you're using the wheel because, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I do have the Magpul M-Lock covers. I'm just kind of running the rail into there. Uh, and I do have a... Uh, chemo uh break on there uh for the extra baffle um yeah since that really nothing's changed to this rifle but uh yeah it's a good gun um 
Bear Creek Arsenal somehow works, uh, barely. But yeah, eventually change that out. So, yeah. In conclusion, while this device has flaws, this thing really performs for the money. This is not a duty lamb, but more of a way to add nighttime shooting capabilities to all of your firearms without spending an arm and leg for something under five milliwatts. As usual, feel free to ask questions or comment. I plan on making more lamb videos or night vision videos down the road. Yeah. There's uh, two lasers I've seen that I'm really interested in, the Engal or a Mall clone. I think those would be really cool to check out and I might buy one soon. Um, sorry for the wait and sorry for the stuttering on the video. I'll try to do scripts now and uh, so you guys are more informed on this type of stuff. But I also uh, kind of give a certain amount of time for recording. Um, but yeah, sorry for the thanks and thank you guys so much for watching to this point. Uh, as usual, more stuff coming soon. I say that every time, but uh, bye.